Laugh It Up, Hydroponic Gardens, The Wave of the Future, Eating Out of This World, we get to describe what happened and why, as well as sequence ideas to summarizing. That's today's Literacy Corner. I'm Mr. McCoy, and here it comes now. Be prepared to describe what happened and why as we laugh it up, chuckle, giggle, snicker, hoot, cackle, guffaw. It doesn't matter how you do it or what you call it. What matters is that you do it often because laughing is good for you. Not only does laughing make you feel great at the moment, it actually improves your health. Laughing is good exercise, and here's why. If you laugh hard, then the muscles in your belly tighten and relax, which is what exercise is all about. Your leg, back, and face muscles also get exercise. Even your heart gets exercise as it beats faster. You actually get the same kind of exercise you would get if you were riding a bike or rowing a boat. Think about the last time you laughed long and hard. You probably ended up tired and out of breath. Why? Because your whole body just had a good workout. Laughter can help keep you healthy. When you laugh, your body produces something called endorphins. Your body is better at fighting off sickness with endorphins. In fact, the more endorphins you have, the better your body can fight against harmful germs. And that means you won't get sick as often. Have you ever noticed that laughing may make you cough or hiccup? Coughs and hiccups help keep your breathing path clear. There's another good thing about laughter. It helps your body get rid of germs that enter through your mouth and nose. Laughter is contagious. When one person laughs, another person will probably start laughing too. Did you know that your brain actually responds when you hear someone else laugh? Your brain triggers the muscles in your face to get ready to laugh. Scientists think that contagious laughter allows the expansion of social networks. In other words, laughing can help you make friends. So it turns out that laughing isn't just good for one reason, but it can be healthy for people to laugh together too. You get to describe what happened and why. What happens with laughing and why. Share with your fellow listener. Get ready to sequence ideas to summarize as we delve into hydroponic gardens, the wave of the future. Imagine growing juicy strawberries without soil. Growing plants without soil is called hydroponic gardening. Plants are grown only in water. The water contains nutrients or food that help the plants grow. Because of their many benefits, hydroponic gardens may be the wave of the future. First, hydroponic gardens help plants grow faster than those grown in soil. When a plant sits in flowing water with added nutrients, its roots do not need to search for food. Farmers can control the amount of nutrients in the water. That way, they can make sure plants get exactly what they need. Second, hydroponic gardens need far less space than soil gardens. They can even be designed so plants grow on walls. As a result, hydroponics can be done almost anywhere. This allows people in congested cities to grow their own fruits and vegetables. Third, hydroponic gardens don't need as much water. They use up to 10 times less water than soil gardens. This is because the same water can be reused again and again. It doesn't just drain away into the ground. Hydroponic gardens can be expensive to set up, but over time, they save money. They use less energy and produce indoor crops all year round. Hydroponic gardening might also solve an important problem. It could help produce more food to feed people around the world who don't have enough to eat. So you have the opportunity right now to sequence the ideas in this article in order to summarize it.
here comes eating out of this world, be prepared to sequence ideas in order to summarize this article. Astronaut food has changed over the years. In the early days of space exploration, astronauts traveled in small spacecraft where there was little room for food. Fresh foods in early space travel were not practical. They spoiled, took up too much space, and were too heavy. First, foods in space. Instead of fresh foods, astronauts ate food that was semi-liquid. It had to be squeezed from a tube or slurped through a straw. Even foods like beef were eaten this way. The semi-liquid food was often described as unpleasant. Astronauts also ate freeze-dried food. Freeze-dried foods don't spoil, they don't weigh much, and they don't take up much space. Add water and you have fresh peas, mashed potatoes, steak, or macaroni and cheese. There is even freeze-dried ice cream. Astronauts on the Apollo missions were the first to have hot water, which made rehydrating foods easier and improved the food's taste. These astronauts were also the first to use the spoon bowl. The spoon bowl allowed astronauts to eat with a spoon instead of squeezing food through a tube. Eating in space today. When astronauts travel to space, sometimes they are there for months. They are not able to bring all the food they need with them. Regular shipments of food are sent to astronauts so they can stay healthy. Even though food options have improved over time, there are some foods and beverages that astronauts can go without. One of those beverages is soda. The air bubbles do not rise to the top of the liquid and escape like they do on Earth. Instead, the bubbles stay in the liquid, causing issues with digestion. Nishant Mehta wants to know about fizzy drinks in space. Well, there are no, uh, soda, there are no carbonated beverages here, but I have a little bit of, uh, of a dissolving tablet that will simulate the same thing. And if I add that to my water supply, well, there are no carbonated beverages here on orbit, but I brought a little bit of a carbonated uh, a, of a, a pill here that will make a little carbonation. And you can see that all the bubbles that it creates just stay right in the solution. They don't uh, float to the top because there is no top. So it just creates a whole bunch of little bubbles that stay suspended. And if you were to open a soda pop, it would do the very same thing. The future of space food. In the future, astronauts may have other ways to get food while in space. Scientists are studying ways that astronauts could grow fresh fruit and vegetables in space. They are testing ways to use water instead of soil to grow plants. This type of growing is called hydroponics. Space food has improved over time. Scientists continue to study new ways to feed astronauts while they are in space. If they can grow their own gardens, there is no telling what kinds of delicious feasts future astronauts will enjoy. So now you have the opportunity to sequence ideas in order to summarize this article. Go for it. And this marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. Another is coming soon. It too will be out of this world.